Hey class, our next unit is going to be the Industrial Revolution. This is a, a unit that takes place between the years of 1750 and 1850, specifically in Great Britain, but it will spread to the rest of the world. In the past, and for the thousands of years before the Industrial Revolution took place, farmers are going to use really simple hand tools, things you know like uh, rakes and shovels, and really uh, simple devices here. But the Industrial Revolution is going to see the, uh, the birth of new um, equipment and new technology. Um, for example, you have large sewing machines, which is going to totally change the means of production. With more machines, we see the uh, birth of more factories and more and more uh, production being done in small areas. So we're going to see the birth of cities and you know a more what we call urban way of life. Um, travelers are going to move very quickly from what we see here, like the countryside, to more industrialized cities because the industrialized cities are going to offer the new jobs and it's going to be the uh, the place that you find factories. The simple countryside slowly develops into a uh, more urban way of life. Um, we see the birth of large towns and cities that look like this where um, a lot of these uh, doorways and windows above here are going to be uh, tenements or apartments where a lot of people will live in very small quarters. Here is a picture of uh, an industrialized village where you have uh, the first initial homes where people are going to live in and the birth of the first factories. Okay, again, um, this could be a picture of Great Britain because of the access to waterways. Um, you have locomotives and steam engines. And uh, most importantly, you have access to water where ships can bring goods in and out. So uh, Great Britain, as we'll see in uh, just a little bit, will be the perfect place to start the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution is going to be made pos possible by a population explosion. Um, you have three factors here. One is the second agricultural revolution, where we have all these new farming techniques. Two is all the more people that we're going to have in the world. We call this a population explosion. And the third is just the development of new technology. So take a, uh, take a minute here to copy down your notes. You can see some of the things that we mentioned before. The rural way of life is beginning to disappear. Okay, the word rural means uh, countryside. Okay, so as they move to cities, they're moving to a more urban form of life. Okay, travelers are moving uh, more constantly than ever before in Europe and quicker than ever before. People can travel from place to place extremely quick. Uh, villages will be t become towns and cities, and people are going to buy goods in uh, stores for the first time. They're going to live in crowded apartments together for the first time. Okay, and here are the three reasons why the Industrial Revolution was made possible. When we mention the second agricultural revolution, we're talking about new farming techniques that are going to uh, increase food production quite drastically. Uh, first, the Dutch farmers are going to lead the way. They build dikes to reclaim land from the sea. What that means is uh, they, they build these uh, large uh, series of uh, dirt um, which we call dikes, which is going to keep the sea from rushing into farms. Second thing is they stop with all the small farms and they combine them into larger ones. The third thing that they seem to master is the use of fertilizer from livestock. Okay, basically uh, you take all the waste of animals and you put it back into the soil and this renews and uh, the nutrients that are coming from this uh, fertilizer is going to renew the soil. Uh, the British farmers expand on the Dutch experiment, so they uh, take the Dutch ideas and improve them. The first thing is they mix different kinds of soils to get higher crop yields. Um, they use new methods of crop rotation where you're going to use um, one field in uh, one part of the season and then you'll move to another field in the second part of the season, which gives that first field time to, uh, to regenerate the soil. Um, they realize that growing turnips will help uh, restore old soil that would have been uh, damaged or lost in the past. And finally, the invention of the seed drill. The seed drill is going to allow uh, farmers to plant way more seeds in a uh, straight line. Okay, so this, uh, this drill is going to work its way down a field, just planting seeds as it goes. Uh, meanwhile, rich landowners push ahead with the enclosure movement. Okay, the enclosure is uh, fencing off property and land okay, to make uh, farms enclosed. Okay, millions and millions of acres become enclosed during this time period. And the result of this is farm output rises. Here's a picture of uh, some of the early plows and the seed drills of the Industrial Revolution. Okay, so as this would uh, plow a field, the seeds could be you know, displaced out of here and into the ground quite easily. Okay, this is going to uh, speed up the rate of output for farm products. We also have 
uh, part of the enclosure movement, which starts with very simple, you know, fencing off of land, and eventually it could uh, turn into like a, a form of barbed wire, which we uh, see more commonly today. And um, if you look at an aerial shot over here, we're going to see the fencing off of all sorts of farmland, which is going to occur all over Europe. The population explosion is one of the uh, the biggest reasons for the birth of the Industrial Revolution. Okay, um, you got to think these new farming methods uh, is going to lead to a lot more food. So with more food, you could have more population. Okay, so in the 1700s, um, the actual population boom wasn't due to more babies being born, but rather declining death rates. Okay, less people are dying. There's more food. Um, so there's no more famine. Okay, no more people are starving. People are eating better. Women are healthier. Women are having stronger babies. In the 1800s, hygiene is getting better. Sanitation is getting better. There's less uh, deaths from disease. Okay, and uh, even medical care is improving. For the first time, we're going to start seeing the practice of, you know, uh, cleansiness using uh, soap, using uh, be people being aware of their hygiene. And the cleaner people are, the higher the birth rates will rise. So we're going to see uh, the population exploding during this time in the 1700s. During this time period, um, industrialists of the of the uh, time are going to realize that burning coal can actually be used as a form of power or energy. So we have a, a few new things going on here, such as the use of water power the use of burning coal, and most importantly here is the steam engine. All right, so we have new sources of energy, we have new materials. This is going to allow business owners to change the way work is going to be done. Uh, most importantly, it's meaning that work is going to be done more rapidly and they're going to be able to produce way more products. Uh, this is occurring in the 1700s. We have some important people like Thomas Newcomen, who is going to develop a steam engine which is powered entirely by coal. Uh, James Watt is going to become famous for improving on the steam engine, okay, and making it more efficient and actually used in locomotives like we know it today. Um, improved iron. People begin to realize that coal could be used to produce iron, okay, a material uh, used in construction of machines and actual steam engines. Uh, the Darby family of England develops methods to produce better quality, less expensive iron. Okay, so iron can be more affordable and available to people. This is a picture of how the uh, steam engine would work. You need to imagine up here that there is a, a form of coal that's being burned. Okay, so as the uh, everything is burned off the coal, it will go into the machine here, into the steam engine. Okay, and as that smoke and uh, everything being burned off makes its way down here, there's a piston that moves back and forth. Okay, that air is that hot air is then compressed and pushed into here, and shot out as exhaust steam. Okay, it's a lot more complex than that, but that's the general idea, which is going to be able to propel an object forward by the use of steam. As we look at a, a map of Europe, there's a specific reason why the Industrial Revolution started where it did. Okay, we're going to focus on England here because in England, right over here just uh, north of Europe, we're going to see the birth of the Industrial Revolution. There are several reasons why it happens here. Okay, first of all, Britain has large supplies of coal and iron. Uh, coal and iron are going to be what drives the Industrial Revolution. There's also a large labor supply. Okay, remember the word labor means people who are willing to work. Okay, there's skilled mechanics. Um, people want jobs. People are now moving into cities. There is plenty of demand for work. Okay, and the British economy had always been uh, lucrative, which means they were always uh, making money. They had the capital. They had the money. They had the wealth to invest. Okay, with all this money, consumer goods are affordable. People have money. They're willing to spend it. Okay, so that's three reasons right there. The fourth is Britain has a stable government. Okay, they could support this economic growth. Uh, many British entrepreneurs came from religious groups that encouraged thrift and hard work. So this is all part of their mentality at the time. As early as the 1600s, uh, cotton became a major product of the British. Okay, uh, they develop a putting out system where they're going to get their cotton from uh, different colonies that they own, such as from India okay, and places in uh, Latin America over here. So what they do is they have the cotton brought to home and they mass produce it into you know different products and those products are then sold to the same places that they got the cotton from okay so this system is uh, extremely lucrative for the British and damaging to the colonies that they own so the demand for cloth grows uh, so much in Great Britain that inventors have to come up with some new ideas okay there's just too much demand and uh, the, the people can't produce enough of these products made out of cotton so some of the new inventions that are that come about are the flying shuttle which allows uh, weaves to work much faster. The spinning jenny, which could spin several threads at the same time rather than one. 
and the water frame, which is used uh, water power to speed up the spinning still further. Okay, so you have three inventions here. The new machines were too large and expensive to be operated at home. Thus, the putting out system was replaced by the first factories. Okay, places that's going to bring several workers together and machines to produce large quantities of goods at once. Here we can see a picture of some of the first factories that are going to take place in Great Britain. Inside of these factories, we'll be seeing uh, some different uh, inventions, such as the flying shuttle, as you see here, and the spinning jenny, which is going to allow uh, several uh, wheels of uh, thread to be used at once. With all these new products, you must be asking yourself, how are they going to get these products out to different um, areas of Great Britain? How are they going to get these products out to different parts of Europe? How are they going to get these products across the Atlantic Ocean? So as production increases, entrepreneurs find cheaper methods of move, moving goods. First of all, turnpikes okay, or toll roads are going to take place all throughout Great Britain. You have more canals being dug out. You have stronger bridges being made. Uh, better harbors to house more ships. Okay, um, the invention of the steam locomotive makes possible the growth of railroads. So now not only do we have the steam engine powering steamboats, we also have locomotives and railroads beginning to take place. Here you can see a picture of the building of the first turnpike, okay, which is going to uh, allow the transportation of goods to go much quicker. And uh, even beyond that, we're going to see the birth of the locomotive and uh, the first railroads that are going to take place in the United States and then in Great Britain. This graph right here really sums up uh, travel times to London and how quick transportation really got when you compare it to the old times before that. So, for example, in, uh, in Manchester, to go from Manchester to London in 1750, it took about 74 hours. Okay, and by the time 1830 comes around, it only takes 20 hours to travel that far. And by 1850, it takes only 5 hours to travel between London and Manchester. Okay, this is a direct result of the birth of railroads and steam locomotives, okay, which is going to make transporting goods way quicker and you can transfer way more at once.